So in a previous video, I talked about adding a second drive to a laptop, and I recommended one of these. So what it is, is an adapter lets you put a laptop hard drive or solid state drive inside of it, and then this whole adapter goes into a laptop. Now I'm going to start by removing the laptop's battery and taking out the DVD drive. Now most laptops the DVD drive will be held in by one screw and in this case it's right here. And I'll set the screw aside and then the DVD drive just get a thumbnail in the edge and pull it out. And that's generally how it's done. Now, if you need help figuring out how to take out the DVD drive in your computer, what you can do is find the model number of the computer. For instance, this model number is uh, MS1618. If you do a Google search for your laptop's model number, along with remove DVD drive, in most cases you'll find instructions. You might also try the model number and service manual to find the instructions. Okay, so I'll put that over there. Now, this caddy. There's actually two different sizes of this that you can buy on Amazon. This is the larger of the two. So what I did before I purchased this, I took out the DVD drive and I measured the height of it. This one is a little over 12 millimeters. The thinner version of the drives are 9 millimeter. So definitely before you order the Caddy, make sure you're getting the correct size. Now, when you go to take out your DVD drive, if it turns out to be a different size other than either 12 or 9 millimeter, these Caddies won't work. And if it's a slot loaded DVD as opposed to a tray that comes out, if it's just a slot that goes in, you're not going to be able to use this. Okay, so the, the Caddy comes with a generic faceplate. It's just a flat, basic faceplate, and it may fit your laptop, but chances are you're going to have to remove it and put on the one that came with your DVD drive. Now on this one, what I'm going to do, you could and this can work, although it's dangerous, you can break it, is just grip the faceplate and pull it off. The problem with that is you risk breaking the clips that hold the faceplate onto the DVD drive, and then you won't be able to then transplant it over to uh, the caddy. So the safe way to go about it is to eject the tray, and I'm just using a paper clip to go in this eject hole, which allows the tray to come out. So I'll hold it. Now this is the, the top part. This is where you put a disc. I'll turn it over and there are two clips that need to be released. One right here and the other over on the left side. And This can be difficult or it can be easy. So what I'm going to do is just set it down. I'm going to push in with a flathead screwdriver on the clip and then pull with my thumb the faceplate out and that also released it over here and it's all intact if it yours doesn't come out that easily on the other uh, right side basically you do the same process you push down on the clip as you pull out okay so got our faceplate the next thing we need to do is transplant over this little bracket from the DVD drive over to the caddy. To do that, these are usually held in by two screws, so I will unscrew both of them. And while I'm doing this, I'm having them in the same orientation. 
So the power and data connections are on the left side. So then I can just move this over. And screw in the bracket onto the caddy. So I won't tighten it all the way down until I get the other one started in the hole. These are a little bit difficult to get to go in. But there you go. Okay. So that's been carried over. Now this we can essentially just put it away. You can always put that back in if you ever do need a DVD drive. So the caddy looks like, well, that came off really easy. Uh, the temporary one on the caddy. All right, so basically you just put the faceplate from your DVD drive on the caddy, same way the temporary one came off. Just give it a good push. All right. Now, to install the hard drive, I have one right here, and uh, what you do is you just line up the data and power connections with the data and power on the drive. I'll get that started and then let it drop down into the caddy and then I'll move it over. All right. So turn this over and now, the instructions that came with the caddy, I have to tell you, were a disappointment. They talk about a caddy retaining latch, which this does not have. So apparently they changed the version of the caddy and didn't bother to change the instructions. So how you actually do it is on the drive, there are screw holes on the side, and these little pin-looking things are actually screws. So you take this tiny screwdriver they send along with it, and you tighten it down. Basically you want to get it all the way in so this part is smooth. Otherwise it will get caught as you're trying to put the caddy into the, the laptop. Just about there. Okay, and then I'll do the other one. Hmm. Doesn't look, doesn't feel like this is going to go in. All right, what I'm going to do is just take out this one. Having one of the two screws in there will be enough to keep it in place. I'm just going to completely unscrew this and take that out. Okay. So the other thing about this, the build quality on the Caddy is not very good. But, you know, it's only $10 uh, on Amazon, and it does work. Um, they uh, It feels a little bit flimsy, and they have this tape on there and you basically have to peel it off. Problem I saw is that it kind of goes under some of the parts, so it's actually under there. But I'll go ahead and take it off. Oops, it popped off. Get that back on there. Yeah, so the the faceplate doesn't hold on very well. Let 
given that this outside piece doesn't actually serve any functions, what you could do if yours doesn't clip on very well is uh, put some hot glue on the, uh, the clips and then push it in and when the glue hardens it'll stay in place. Okay, so that is ready. See if we can slide this back in. And basically you just put it in the way that it came, the way the, uh, the DVD drive came out. Let me go ahead and remove this tape from this bracket. Okay. I'll just get it going. And it may be a tight fit. Feels like this is. Just line it up and wiggle it in. There it goes. Alright. So then I'll put the screw back in. Battery back in. And power it up. And everything I'm doing from this point on applies to adding a second hard drive or a second drive, whether a hard drive or a solid state drive, to any computer. The process is the same, whether you put it into a caddy like I just did or a regular drive bay. Okay, so we're in Windows. I'm going to click on the File Explorer, and it's come up to the This PC view. By default on Windows 10, it'll come up to the Quick Access. To get to this view, just click this PC. So it's showing me my C drive, which is a 120 gigabyte solid state drive, and also the new D drive. This is the drive that I put into the Caddy. It's showing up here because this hard drive was previously in another computer. Now if I had put in a new hard drive, or one that was blank, had been previously erased, it wouldn't show up here. So when you do this, don't be surprised if the drive doesn't show up, because if it's a blank or new drive, it won't. There's a few other things you have to do before it shows up. So to show you what actually happens, what I'm going to do is take this blank drive and connect it with a SATA to USB adapter. So I'll connect the drive. And the computer will detect it. And you notice it didn't show up here in this PC. That's because the drive is blank. First it needs to be initialized and then formatted and given a drive letter. So to do that on Windows 10 or Windows 8, you right click, that's clicking with the right mouse button on the start button, and go to disk management. If you're running Windows 7 or Windows Vista, you left click on the start button right click on computer and go to manage and click disk management on the left so when disk management started up it noticed that we have a blank drive connected and it's asking us if we want to initialize the disk basically just take the defaults here and click OK so here in the view we can see the C drive which is the solid state drive in the computer and the D drive which is the drive I put in the caddy now if I scroll down, there is a third drive, and it says it's unallocated. So to format the drive, what you do is you right-click on just a blank spot and click New Simple Volume. Click Next. Let it use the whole space on the drive. Next. It will assign a drive letter, the next one available, and in this case it's the E drive. You can click and change that if you like. I'll click Next. The default choice is to format the drive, which is what you want. No reason to change the file system or the allocation unit size. The volume label, you can basically just change it to whatever you like. I usually leave it blank. Leave Perform a quick format checked, otherwise it takes a really long time. And click Next. And Finish. It'll format the drive and open it up in a new window. So this is a blank drive. 
I'll go ahead and close it and the disk management and here it is in the list. Now since that was just to show you what would happen if you did put in a blank or new hard drive I'm going to go ahead and eject that disk and disconnect it. So the reason I added a second drive to the computer is that I needed more storage and that is pretty much the only reason you would add a second drive to a computer but on the C drive it's only a 120 gigabyte solid state drive and that's where Windows is installed and that's where I'll install all the programs that will make the computer nice and responsive. Now as far as where the files will go I want to put them all on the D drive and if I go into the D drive since this came out of another computer it's got a Windows folder and programs folders and users folders and what I'm going to do is go through the process of removing the Windows folder and moving the files that are in the users folders to the root of the D drive. So to start that process I'm going to double click on the user folder that has all the files in it and whenever you try and open up a user folder on a hard drive that was originally in another computer it will ask you to get permission to access the folder. Just basically just click continue and this can take a long time or a short amount of time. It really depends on the speed of the drive and the amount of files you have in the folders. Okay, so here I've got the desktop folder, the documents, downloads, favorites, music, pictures, and videos folders. There's a few others, but those are the ones I'm really concerned about because they actually have files in them. So for right now, I'm going to go back to this PC, to the C drive, users, and living room. And this is the user folder for the user account that I'm currently logged into. If I click the start button, you can see it says living room. So what I'm going to do right now, all of these folders are on the C drive. And as I start downloading things and creating files, uh, the drive would get full very quickly. There's only, let's see, 75 gigabytes free on this drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these key folders to the root of the D drive. To do that, I'm going to right click on the first one and go to properties, click on location, and right here it's telling me where it's currently located. It's on the C drive in the users living room and it's called desktop. And I want to move that to the D drive. So I'll click move which brings up select a destination. I'm going to go to this PC, double click on the D drive, and I'm going to create a new folder called desktop. I'm going to highlight the folder and click select folder. And when I click OK, it's going to ask me if I want to move all the files that are currently on the desktop on the C drive to the new desktop folder on the D drive. And in this case, it's just going to be this utilities folder that gets moved. But basically, anything that's in the folder on the C drive will be moved to the new folder on the D drive. I'll click Yes. And you'll notice the desktop folder is no longer here. It's actually now on the D drive on the root of the drive. And there's my utilities folder. So what I'm going to do is go back to the living room folder on the C drive and do the same thing to the documents folder. I'm going to right click, go to properties, location, move, go to this PC and the D drive, create a folder called documents, Highlight the folder and click Select Folder, OK, and Yes to confirm the move. I didn't have any files in the Documents folder, so it happened instantaneously. I'll do the same to Downloads, only this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. 
going to go to location. Instead of going through the move process, what you can actually do is just type in where you want it to be. So I'm going to change it to the D drive. Take those extra folders out, make it just be downloads, and when, it, when I click OK, it says it does not exist, do you want to create it? I'm going to click yes, and say yes to moving any files that are there. So the downloads folder disappeared, and I'll go check and make sure it is definitely under the D drive. So doing it that way shaved off a few steps. I'm not really concerned with the favorites, and I don't have anything in the music folder, but I'll go ahead and move it just in case I do start downloading music and putting it in the music folder. So properties, location, change it to the D drive, into a music folder on the root of the drive, OK, yes to create it, and yes to moving files. And again, there's nothing there, so it was pretty well instantaneous. Do the same for pictures. and the videos folder. Okay, so back on this PC, I freed up some space on the C drive already, which will leave me plenty of space to put on any extra programs. And under the D drive, we now have the desktop, documents, downloads, pictures, and videos folders on the D drive. So if I go back to this PC, all these folders at the top, instead of being on the C drive, they're now on the D drive. So if I right click on any one of them and go to properties, under location, they are on the D drive. And what that means is that anytime you're in a program and you want to save something, you can just save it to the desktop or the documents or the downloads, any one of those folders, and you don't have to think about where it's going on the drive. It's just automatically put on the D drive where you have lots of free space. Now under the D drive, since this hard drive came from another computer, there's still a Windows folder and a few Programs Files folders that don't really need to be there anymore. Now the issue is getting rid of them. It's not easy. If you can at all help it, it's best to, when you move a drive that's previously been used in another computer to a new computer, is to format it and start over fresh. Now in this case, this drive actually had some files on it that I didn't want to just delete it would take a lot longer to back those up and then put them back on than to do what I'm about to do, which is show you how to delete a Windows folder on a second hard drive that was previously used in another computer. Now, in most cases, to delete a folder, you would right-click on it and tell it to delete. And in the case of the Windows folder, and usually the Programs Files folders as well, it won't let you do it. It will say that the files are inaccessible because they come from a different version of Windows than you're actually running on at the moment. So folder access denied is generally what it says. And if you click try again, it just tries again and it fails. So I'll click cancel. So there is a manual way to go about this, but I'm going to try a program called Unlocker. I'm just going to do a Google search for it. Looks like I can get it from Major Geeks. Major Geeks is pretty good about not having too much ads that trick you into downloading things that you don't really need, although there was there is one right there. But it automatically started the download, so I'm going to get it installed. 
and you want to be careful when you're installing a program like this. The quick option will install a toolbar into your browser, which you don't want. So I'm going to click Advanced and uncheck the toolbar option. It's going to put it on the C drive. And it's going to put an extension in the Explorer. What that means is that when I right click on a folder, it'll give me the option to use this program on it. And I'm going to uncheck the updates option. The program should work just as it is without updates. And that would more than likely, if you let it do updates, put something in your startup. So it would constantly be running in the background. I'm going to close that down. So now if I right click on the Windows folder, and make sure you're doing this on the drive that's not the one that's actually your C drive. So I'm on local disk D. If you try and delete the Windows directory on your C drive, you're going to have some problems. So again, this is a Windows folder that's on a second hard drive, and it's a version of Windows that's no longer in use, and I just want to delete the folder. So I'm going to right-click on it and go to Unlocker. I'm going to change No Action to Delete and click OK. And at first it may look like it's not doing anything, but then a little program window will pop up and give you a progress bar. And this can take a long time. The advantage to this program is that you tell it to delete the folder and it just does everything for you, as opposed to going through the manual route, which is a multi-step process where you have to do several things and then wait for a period of time for that to get done, and then do some more things and wait for that to get done. And very often there's a third set of things you have to do in order to just delete the Windows folder. This program will just take care of it. So this is something you probably want to do when, uh, when you're not going to need the computer for a period of time. It's uh, probably a good idea to do this um, before you, you know, go away from the computer for lunch or even uh, when you go to bed at night, tell it to do it. And you can see it's just now starting to get a green progress bar. It's going to take some time. So after this got done, I would then go on to delete the users folders, the programs folders, and all the other folders on the D drive that I no longer need. And you may be thinking, well, why not just highlight them all and tell it to do them all at the same time? Well, unfortunately, that doesn't work. Uh, if you try doing that, the unlocker program just doesn't start at all. You can only do it one folder at a time. So that's another way to install a second hard drive into a laptop, how to move your folders from the C drive to the D drive, and how to delete no longer needed Windows folders from the second drive. Thanks for watching.